Here we have a circuit, a simple transistor switch driving a small relay. When I press this button, it actuates the relay. Now normally when you build a circuit like this, you're supposed to install a small diode around the relay coil so you don't blow out your transistor. When the current through the coil is interrupted, it generates a voltage spike. Now sometimes that voltage spike will exceed the collector voltage rating of the small transistor. Usually it's around 40 volts uh, for something like a 2N3904 or 3906. This is a 2N3906. I had a, a whole bunch of them, so I just dug one up and put one in here. Simple PNP transistor, uh, simple transistor switch. Now, I can, I can actuate this all day long, and it's probably going to be all right. Now, if I put a much bigger coil in here, it might well blow this thing up. We'll see. All right, so what I've got here is a uh, interstage transformer from a tube amplifier. Now, it is a transformer, but each side of this thing has five Henrys of inductance, which if you don't know, that is a lot of inductance. This little relay here probably has an inductance, actually I measured it, it's about um, 100 millihenries. So for a given voltage, this is going to put out one heck of a kick. In fact, if you put 5 volts across this thing and then touch it, it will shock you when you pull the wire away. So <laughs> if this transistor actuates more than once, I will be very, very surprised. Let's see what happens. Now, I have hooked the uh, one, one side of the transformer onto where the exact location of this coil was in this circuit here, basically between the emitter of this transistor and the power supply. So when I press this button, it's drawing about 20 milliamps. And surprisingly, it's holding up. It's at about 6 volts right now, the power supply is sitting at 6 volts. I'm going to go ahead and crank that up a little bit. Let's put it right around uh, 15 volts. Yeah, let's do 15 volts. Drawing 60 milliamps now. Alright, fuck it, let's do 30 volts. 30 volts. Drawing 140 milliamps. Huh. Well, I'm a little surprised we didn't see any uh, massive explosions here, but take a gander at the power supply. I'm not even pressing the switch, and the transistor appears to have become extremely leaky. Before it only drew about uh, 10 milliamps idle, which it also shouldn't do, but if I press the button, it climbs another 20 milliamps, and when I don't press it, it goes down to uh, 120 milliamps. So it, the maximum is 140, which I think still exceeds the power rating of this transistor, and then drops to 120, and it's just sitting at that. So that, that, I found that very interesting. It must puncture the base region of the transistor much slower. And much, it does, maybe it doesn't cascade like I, th I thought it would. Very interesting. Okay, so this is the circuit diagram uh, for the circuit I just built on the breadboard. It's a 2 and 3906 PNP transistor uh, operated as a switch. I have a 4K7 uh, resistor. Uh, for base bias and then a push button switch to ground to turn it on and it will go through the coil whether it be the uh, interstage transformer I had or the relay doesn't matter which uh, now I did a calculation a rough calculation for exactly how big the voltage spike would be for the uh, for the interstage transformer if we assume well that the formula is uh, 
v equals ldi dt. Now this is a derivative of the current with respect to time, but this is basically the exact same thing as this, delta i over delta t. It's just the change is bigger. This is an infinitesimally small change versus this is a finitely small change. And that change can be quantified. It's 20 milliamps, which we measured. I mean, it's about that, it's not exact. But neither is this one millisecond. Uh, is the fall time, rise time, fall time of the switch. When the switch is let go, the time it takes for the current to discharge should be about one millisecond, uh, or so I predict. And the inductance we know, I measured it actually to be about five Henry's. So that works out to about 100 volts at five volts with this much current going through it that we measured, the inductive kick should be about 100 volts. Now the VCE, the uh, voltage of the collector to the emitter maximum is 40 volts. Well actually it'd be like negative 40 volts uh, because it's PNP, but basically you can't have more than 40 volts difference across this thing, otherwise you're in danger of puncturing the base region of this transistor. Now then, this is the model of the uh, PNP transistor. We have current flowing f into the emitter, and you have p-type uh, material and p-type material, and then you have n-type material in the middle, and that base region is very thin, and this determines the voltage rating of the transistor. And high-voltage transistors have a thicker base, which is also why they have lower beta. In this case, it's just a general purpose transistor. It has a beta of like 100 or 200 actually. Unless you saturate it, then it drops rapidly down to like 50, but details. But if the voltage gets high enough, it will puncture this. But what I seem to have discovered here is that it doesn't puncture and then all this current rushes through and burns it up. Although that does happen sometimes. If you get enough current through it, it will just literally explode. But in this case, it just got hot. It didn't actually explode. It became extremely leaky. Transistor leakage is nothing more than electrons or charge carriers, rather, uh, jumping over the base, getting through the base region. So the collector and emitter are not completely isolated. And it appears without a protection diode, it puts a little punctures in this base. And those punctures will make the transistor leakier and leakier. So every time you press that button, it just makes it leakier and leakier to the point where it has almost no beta. It's almost not even, doesn't even hardly amplify anymore because it's so leaky. So yeah, um, that's why you need um, flyback protection diodes on your transistors when you're operating them with inductive loads such as motors, relay coils, or, um, well, anything that's an inductor, anything that it's got a lot of current going through it. Now those small relay I had, you probably don't even need a, uh, a protection diode for that because the voltage generated off of that, well, it's going to be about uh, 10, 20 volts at the worst, which is well within the rating of the transistor. So that's good to know if you want to keep your circuit simple.